Refrigerant piping design is an important aspect of any air conditioning or refrigeration system. Proper design of the refrigerant piping system ensures that the system operates efficiently and reliably. Here are eight key factors to consider when designing refrigerant piping. One, refrigerant system layout. The layout of the refrigerant system should be designed to minimize the length of the piping and the number of fittings and inline components required. This reduces pressure drop in the system and helps improve efficiency. The total length of the refrigerant piping must not exceed the manufacturer's requirements as this could result in a loss of capacity. 2. Refrigerant Pipe Sizing The diameter of the piping should be chosen based on the required refrigerant flow rate and pressure drop. The wrong size piping can cause excessive pressure drops leading to reduced system efficiency and capacity while increasing power consumption. Liquid lines that are installed larger than required will increase the amount of refrigerant in the system which could create additional problems while undersizing liquid lines can cause the refrigerant to flash before it reaches the expansion valve which will starve the evaporator and cause a loss in capacity and the possible frosting up of the coil. If the suction line is oversized then there could be problems with the return of oil to the compressor and if they are undersized there can be a loss of capacity and an increase in superheat. Number three, refrigerant type. Different refrigerants have different properties such as pressure, temperature, and viscosity. The refrigerant type should be considered when designing the piping system and the system should be designed to accommodate the specific characteristics of the refrigerant used. 4. Piping materials. The material used for the piping should be compatible with the refrigerant and should be able to withstand the pressure and temperature of the system. ACR type copper tubing is commonly used for refrigerant piping in the HVACR industry. 5. Refrigerant piping insulation. Proper insulation is necessary to prevent refrigerant lines from losing their cooling capacity. The thickness of the insulation should be chosen based on the temperature difference between the refrigerant and the surrounding environment. Insulation thickness requirements can be found in the various codes that regulate the installation of the refrigerant piping. See our video on the proper methods for insulating refrigerant piping. 6. Piping support. Refrigerant piping should be supported at regular intervals to prevent sagging and vibration which can cause leaks and reduce system efficiency. 7. Expansion and contraction. The refrigerant piping should be designed to accommodate the expansion and contraction of the piping due to temperature changes. Long lengths of piping can cause problems when temperature changes with the piping vary. The piping length will grow when heated up and contract when cooled down. Some method of compensating for the variable of expansion and contraction must be considered. Copper piping expansion equals delta temperature in piping times piping length times coefficient of expansion. 8. Refrigerant oil management. Oil will be circulated around the system with the refrigerant and must be returned to the compressor where it's needed to provide lubrication of bearings and moving parts. For this to happen, it's important that the refrigerant piping is sized correctly, including the refrigerant velocity. As refrigerant changes from a liquid to a vapor in the evaporator, the oil is separated out, which requires the correct velocity to ensure that the oil returns to the compressor. It's important that the refrigerant oil return to the compressor at the same rate at which it leaves. Summary. Overall, the design of the refrigerant piping system should be carefully considered to ensure that the system operates efficiently and reliably. A well-designed system will ensure that the suction, liquid, and discharge piping is large enough to prevent excessive pressure drop, yet small enough to ensure that the velocity will carry the oil back to the compressor crankcase. It's recommended to consult with a professional HVAC engineer to ensure proper design and installation. If you like that video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.